Hello and welcome to another edition of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm Alan Barnes and as you can see we're enjoying glorious weather here in Lancashire. Fantastic, we're on the tail end of Storm Helene, it's tanking it down and we're on a rock hard canal and we're going to show you how to fish bread punch. Today I'm on the Leeds Liverpool Canal at a stretch called Cowling Brown near Chorley. I've got fond memories of this place. It's where I started my match fishing career, if you want to call it that. Uh, it was 30 years ago and I was with a little club called Chorley Socials. In fact, we used to meet at a pub about half a mile from here called the Spinner's Arms. They were great times, great friendly lads, and I learnt a lot about the art of canal fishing with them. And today, we're going to look at bread punch and we're going to try and show you how you can improve your bread punch fishing skills and catch a nice net of fish from a hard canal like this. Now when we say a nice net of fish, we're talking Lancashire, we're talking the Leeds Liverpool Canal. And a nice net of fish today might be three pound, four pound of roach. It's a gin clear canal, it's a hard canal, and you know, it's no wonder that some of the best anglers ever to come out of the country and to fish for England cut the teeth on venues like this. The bottom line is that two or three pound of fish could actually win you a match on the Leeds Liverpool Canal. It's that sort of place. Conversely, if you land on a few skimmers, you could catch nine or 10 pound or even more. And I mean, you know, just lately, the canal around Wigan's been fishing very well. People have been catching, you know, 10 pounds plus of skimmers and so on. But we're heading into the autumn, as you can see with all the leaves, the temperatures are cooling down, the roach are starting to feed, and bread's a fantastic and cheap and effective way of catching them. Here today, for example, I've got less than, I've got 50 pence worth of bait with me. That's all you need to put a net of fish together. Let's talk about bread fishing in a bit more detail and we'll start with the bait preparation and the slices for the punch. So basically, all you need to do is get hold of a decent medium sliced loaf. Aldi, for example, sell bread for about 49p a loaf and really all you need is one of the medium slice loaves and you can uh, take a few slices for the hook and you can cut the crusts off all the other slices and just put it through a liquidizer. Um, what I like to do if I'm using liquidized bread is put it through the liquidizer, freeze it and then get it out of the freezer when it's still frozen and blast it again through the liquidizer in its frozen state. And that actually makes the, uh, the particles go even finer. When we get to winter and when we get to the autumn and the fishing becomes a touch harder, I don't want to overfeed the fish. And it's a real art to actually keep a bread peg going for a long time. An awful lot of anglers I've seen over the years have said, you know, well, I, I put a bowl of bread in at the start and I started catching on it and then it just died. It went away from me and I refed and I couldn't get another bite. And basically, I think what's happening is that the liquidized bread is either too coarse and too filling, or they've put too much in. And um, that, will, that will slow your peg down fairly quickly. The, the trick really is just to uh, give them enough interest in the way that you feed and how you feed to keep them in the peg and you really want that pellet of bread that you've punched to be the biggest particle in your swim so that they'll go for it and compete for it. Now you can buy a uh, punch crumb in the shops and I'm a big fan of Maruku punch crumb which has cinnamon in it, it's spicy. But it's not really ideal for a canal like this where the fish are finicky and you know, it's, it's a hard canal. You just want very fine, normal flavored bread the punch crumb works really well for me on places like the Warwickshire Haven 
and any river where you can give them um, crumb with a bit more texture to it and you know because of its density you can get it to go down into deeper water but coming back to the canal we've talked about the liquidized bread there's another superb way of preparing bread and that's um, it involves a bit more work but it's still very good and it's my favorite way of creating the bread for the hook uh, and that's to cut all the slices off a loaf and put the oven on a low heat and put all the slices of bread in the oven and bake them dry. They stay fairly white, they don't go brown, but they dry out, a bit like Melba toast. And then you can crush them down and you can liquidize it. And the resultant ground bait smells so nice. It smells of fresh bread when you wet it with water. And I'm convinced that the roach come to that aroma. They can smell that and they home in on it. And the reason I'm a big believer in fine particles for bread feed is if you actually ever watch somebody feeding ducks, you know, feeding bread, if you watch as the ducks attack the bread on the surface, all that's going down through the water is tiny, tiny fine particles of bread that, you know, obviously have come off the pieces that they're ripping apart with the beaks. And the fish come in underneath that and start hitting those tiny particles. And I just don't want to overfeed the fish and feed them off. I want them to, you know, I want them to stay in the peg and feed for as long as possible because you need to maximise your catching potential. And the longer you can keep the fish feeding, the more you can keep catching and the better chance you have of actually doing well in a match situation. Now I've got a bite on the drop there looking at that. Yeah, there we go. If you see, the, the bristle didn't settle properly. This roach had held up the last number 13 shot on the rig. I'm sure many people watching this video will know that the Leeds Liverpool Canal was built in the Industrial Revolution and it connected Leeds and Liverpool which were both centres of industry at that time and um, because of the fact that all the goods were transported to and from Liverpool and Leeds via the canal uh, on barges pulled by horses a lot of the time in sections of the canal uh, there's a great deal of depth on the inside and here today just as an example I'm only fishing on my top five of my Caden CP2000 pole but it's five and a half foot deep about five meters out if not even that four and a half meters from the bank and um, that's just at the bottom of the near slope and it's where the fish seem to want to be and basically it's a very good depth it's a nice depth for winter as you can see there if I just hold that fish you can see the float there, can't you? And uh, that's a, a really good depth of winter fishing. You know, they're going to feed in that depth of water quite nicely all winter. As I was saying, because of the depth and the need to get the bait down to the fish quickly, I've elected today to use a rig um, incorporating an olivette. And uh, it's a very simple rig. It's just 06 lines straight through. Uh, no hook length, it's just 06 all the way through to the hook, which is a uh, Camasan B590, which is which was commonly used for bloodworm fishing back in the day, and which I still use for bread fishing. And um, the Olivet's a, a lock and slide type one, so I can move it up and down the line if I wish. I can have it further from the hook if I think that the fish are uh, coming up off the bottom and feeding on the drop where I can slide it down closer to the hook if I want to be really positive and get it straight down. Um, the other interesting thing about the rig, which uh, 
I'm sure a chap he might have seen from underneath his umbrella there is um, I've painted the tip and I've put when I've painted it I've hung the floor upside down so the paint has run down to the bottom to the, the very tip of the bristle and it's formed a slight light bulb type blob and this is this is a trick that I was taught by a fine canal angler who's sadly no longer with us, a guy called Leon Green who fished for Silstar Eyes at Walton uh, for many years with distinction and you know Leon uh, made a speciality of fishing this type of rig on the Bridgewater Canal in Manchester catching loads of tiny perch on Joker but when that float sits down to that dimple it's like an optical illusion one minute it's there the next it's disappeared and uh, it's a very sensitive rig it's a 4x14 the Olivet's um, 0.3 of a gram and uh, I've got two number 13 droppers underneath it. Another critical uh, factor in bread punch fishing is having the right elastic. Now, for general canal fishing in sort of depths of two and a half feet, I favour a number two elastic. But when I'm in a depth like this, five, five and a half foot, uh, I choose for bread fishing a number three elastic. The one I'm using today is a midi and uh, it's very good. It's very stretchy, very pingy. And I know that if I hook any bonus fish, say I were to hook a pound fish, I'd have no problem at all getting it out. Now, what have I hooked here? We were talking about bonus fish, weren't we? I've just hooked something now. Oh, it's a bream. Would you believe that? Right on cue. And there's a pike trying to have a go at it. I just saw a pike then. <laughs> As you can see, that elastic's working really nicely. I'm only on all six straight through. Tiny little hook, you know, 22 hook. But it's all about having balanced tackle. And this is perfect. Let's just hope Mr. Pike doesn't grab this fish. There we go, that'll do, won't it? That's a nice bonus in a match. Just put that down for a second and just show this to the camera. That's what you call a canal bonus on a canal like this. No question. Just let me grab that again. And where have I hooked him? In the top lip. We'll put that down. Okay. Right, I'm just getting some bream snot off the line. It's a lovely job, that, isn't it? It's no wonder um, people think we're odd as anglers when we have to deal with things like that, but such is life. Right, well, as we know, bream are a shoal fish and they don't normally swim round in one, so um, let's see if we can catch some more. You never know, do you? Well, I've been fishing now for half an hour, that's all. And looking at my counter, I've had 14 fish, including that bream. And all I've fed since the start is literally 50 pen, a 50 pen sized nugget of sloppy liquidized bread. That's all I've put in, and it's been enough to catch me 15, 16 fish, including that bonus skimmer. So it just shows you that you don't need to put a lot of stuff in to attract fish and keep them feeding in front of you. But I'm, the secret with bread is not to refeed until your bites slow down. And it's true in any aspect of fishing that, I think. I remember years ago fishing with Tommy Pickering uh, and he used to say to me, Alan, the fish will tell you when they want feeding. And what he meant by that was when your bite started to go away and slow down, it was time to start thinking about reintroducing a bit more feed. I'm not going to do that for the moment, but what I have just done, I've just changed from a 5mm punch to 
a six mil punch, just slightly bigger, if you can see that on the back of my hand. And basically, if there is a skimmer there, this might just help me to pick it out. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm fishing this close in, but like I said, there's good depth on the inside. But it's the practicality sometimes. You know, while it's tempting, because you've got a 16 metre pole to go and fish long across there, um, the practicality is that today, with it being very windy, and with it being autumn, and with it raining, that's uh, adding up to one problem, which is leaves. As you can see, they're dotted all over the surface, and um, you know, the good thing about an olivet rig as well is that it enables you to basically lower the bread straight into a, a gap between the leaves and um, you can't do that with a really sensitive, uh, finely strung style rig. I mean, I've got one set up with me here today, but um, it is going to be difficult because of all the leaves on the surface, at least with the olivet. As you can watch now as I do it, I can just find a clear spot where I've fed drop it in and you can see the olivet take the bread straight down and I'm getting a bite within literally three or four seconds of the olivet settling up and the shot starting to settle and there's one on that now can you see it look it's running away with it that's how sensitive the rig is you know those two dropper shot or a telltale shot beneath the olivet are giving everything away so um, it enables you to hook them uh, mostly just in the lip rather than anywhere else you're not deep hooking anything but it gives you that degree of sensitivity i think a, a crucial thing with bread punch fishing is the plumbing up of the peg and um, typically especially when roach are the target i'll fish the bread an inch to two inches off bottom so that pellet's just wafting about and um, if bream are the target, if you're on skimmers and you're fishing with bread, then I'll fish it three inches over depth. Uh, but yeah, for roach, basically, just, just set it so it's just off bottom and uh, work from there. I mean, you can come shallower than that. I have no doubt the way the fish are feeding today, I bet I could take a foot off the depth and I'd still get a bite of cast off these roach because they're ravenous, they're starving and they're, they're, you know, they're feeding very, very strongly. But uh, if you're targeting bream, you know, bream are bottom feeders in the main. And uh, if you just go in, you can go in with a 10 mil punch. You can go really big if you want and look for them. Uh, and just, just fish it slightly over depth. But the other important thing about plumbing is how you plumb. Because on canals, uh, especially shallower canals, um, the last thing you want to be doing is dropping a big plumber 
into a peg and spooking fish. You've got to remember we're catching uh, wild fish on a natural venue and um, the last thing, if let's say I was going across the far side and there was already a bream sitting there across, you know, a three pound bream, uh, it might not stay in the peg if a ounce plummet lands on its head. You know, it's not going to want to stay in the peg if it's frightened by something that's making a lot of noise and disturbance. I, I tend to use the equivalent of a swan shot with a piece of silicon trapped inside it and I just, I just put the hook into the silicon. So I've got a, a very stealthy, quiet uh, means of plumbing up. But the weight of the uh, shot means that on a small delicate float with a soft elastic you can read it to plumb accurately. And I then mark, uh, I mark the pole usually with um, a, a china graph pencil just to get a gauge, uh, a reference marker for the actual depth of the peg. The fishing's good, but this bloody weather's not getting any better. The other thing to mention, uh, if you notice here, is I've got a number 12 back shot situated within the distance of the tip of the bristle and the side eye. Again, this is just a little um, subtle aid to presentation, good presentation. Now, it's not the windiest day here, we've got out of the wind, we've come to a sheltered bit of the canal. But what I'm more interested in is that shot actually enabling me to get two or three inches of line above the float to sit just under the surface. And that just helps with everything in terms of presentation, good presentation. touched on plumbing up earlier and I mentioned about using some little uh, lead weight as short as they are, they're non-toxic actually. This is a Creluso weight that they designed for using with uh, bolo floats and you can see on it I think it's about 8 grams in weight but it's got this piece of silicon sticking out of it. I've cut it off at the other end. I just simply put the hook onto that and use that as a plummet and that's a lot better in my opinion for canal fishing than going lumping in something like that. Great big plumber, you know, which could scare fish in your peg. You don't want to do that. So we'll now talk about how to hook punch on. And as I said, I'm going for a bigger punch now because we're trying to catch some skimmers. And um, the punch I've elected to use is Adrenan and it's actually seven and a half mil. You can see it's quite a substantial diameter. And we're going to just try and uh, catch some bream with that. So. Open up the bread box, punch, there it is. Take the hook, put it in the slot and pull down. And I just like to just gently roll the bread slightly like that. And that's now on the hook. And as you can see, that will expand once it's in the water to a nice disc of fluffy bread. Hard for a skimmer to resist really if they're there and they're feeding. 
Another great product that uh, is worth having in your seat box for uh, finesse fishing on canals is some bristle grease. I tend to dot the floats right down to a dimple, especially if it's hard in winter. And this stuff just helps to keep the float above the surface. You just simply smear a bit on the bristle and that takes care of it. That aids the buoyancy, but it doesn't uh, detract from the sensitivity of the float. Right, I'm going to refeed the peg now. This is only the second feed of the day. It's just gone a little bit quieter, but I'm also mindful that we had that skimmer 10 minutes ago. And by putting some more bread in, we might attract one or two of his brothers and sisters into the peg. So what I've got is this very fine bread. As you can see, it's mixed very sloppy. In fact, I could pour it into the feed pot, which I'm doing now. I can just pour some in. And I'm going to give them that much. This is the smallest feed pot of the three Drennan uh, that you can get. So we'll, we'll just pop that in and see what happens. The other thing I've done, which I haven't talked about yet, is when I've plumbed, I've marked the position on the pole where I need to hold it because I'm only fishing half of this number five section out into the canal. If you can see here on, on the pole, there's a China graph mark and just further along here is a second one. This is a trick I was taught by a canal angler from Lancashire called Steve Wilson and he thinks about his fishing Steve and basically just by marking the pole I hold it like that I'm in the right place and that is exactly where we're feeding in front of us. I'm just going to tip that in you'll see it come out in a minute add a bit a bit of water to it There it goes, it's starting to come out now. And you can see how it forms a lovely, fine, irresistible cloud. And the piece just dropping through to the bottom. Hopefully the skimmers will uh, home in on that. But that's it, that's how you feed. Right, well there's one piece of bread and I've caught about 30 fish on that one half slice of bread. That's now goose. The rain's got to it, it's gone a bit soggy, it's not staying on the hook well. It's time to take it out of the box, put another piece in. And that's another thing to mention, this box, you can buy these online fairly cheaply. I think they're about two quid. And it's like a plastic box with a sliding lid. And not only is it good for keeping rain out, but it's also excellent for keeping bread moist in dry sunny conditions. And obviously you don't want your bread to dry out too much. We'll talk about bread preparation later. Right, well there we go. There's a couple of slices of bread. This is medium sliced bread. I've cut the crusts off. And all I've done with this is rolled them with a rolling pin. I did this last night actually. I rolled them. I, I put them in this uh, airtight sealed bag. Just folded it over. Popped it in the fridge at home. Got them out this morning when I made a flask before we came here. And that's it, simple bread preparation. You can also microwave slices for 15 seconds and that makes them go extremely moist and wet, but it rubberizes them a touch. And if, I, I prefer, if I can, just to fish with standard bread that's just been lightly rolled like this. There's another of those lovely skimmers. Catch 10 or 12 of those in a match and you're cooking. Right, now we've seen uh, a decent skimmer roll uh, three quarters across the canal. Not in front of me, just slightly to my right. And because I've had three or four skimmers now, I want to 
try and attract those skimmers. So I'm going to start a new peg up with bread again at about 10 metres, 10 and a half metres, just where the boat track starts to come up. And there I'm in about four foot of water. Now for skimmers, as I mentioned earlier, you can use a different type of crumb. You can use a coarser crumb. And this is just liquidised bread with a little bit of crust in it because they like to mooch about on the bottom and find something substantial to eat. So I'm just going to wet this up, pot a bowl in, we'll go in with a big uh, punch, we'll go in with an 8 or 9 mil punch and see what happens. You can see that I've just wetted this crumb up and I can squeeze a, a bowl the size of a walnut. Not squeeze it too high but just enough to hold it together and that is going to go in in the pot now. And we'll see if it attracts our skimmers on the far side of the track. Right, the rig for fishing across is a doctored float. It's a Preston Classic 10. And if you look at it, this float originally had a bristle about an inch and a quarter long. I've cut it down and I've actually sleeved it with some silicon rubber and then I've painted over the top. So you get this thickish bristle that's short. And basically, because of the shape, it's a bit like a Chianti. The float kicks over and, and is fishing straight away. And I found it to be very, very good for catching bream and also for snagging yourself in your trousers. Right, now hook wise, uh, we've got a Census 3405, size 17. Much bigger hook, but I'm going to start trying 8 and 9 mil punch now to see if we can catch these skimmers. It's a lovely fine wire black nickel hook, superb for bream. I've caught bream to five pound on the lanky with these, never a problem. They don't get bent, they don't straighten out, they're a very good strong fine hook. And the hook length is 0.10 precision and the main line is 0.12 on this rig. This is a bream rig. The elastic is a number five Preston blue slip, if you can see that. And um, That'll cope with anything that we catch over there if the bream do decide to show up and have a go. You may notice as well that with this Cadence CP2000 pole, I'm using one of the short biconical uh, mini extensions, which are fantastic uh, because they're going to save your pole from damage. If you can see my elbows right on the end of the number seven section, which is where I want to fish. But by having the short section behind me, it means that if I, if I lift into a fish and I put pressure on the pole um, with my elbow, there's no danger of it going through the sidewall of the pole. And that's uh, something well worth thinking about if you're going to buy one of these poles. They're not very expensive uh, to buy those little sections, but they will save you a lot of money in the long run and uh, keep your pole in good condition. Well, as I said, I wanted to see if there were any skimmers across and that's on my third putting over there. But this time I put two discs of seven and a half mil bread on the hook, double punching and it's picked one out straight away. So there we go, a more positive bread approach has brought us another bonus fish. And you know, in a match, catching, as I said, six to a dozen of those, you're gonna be in the coin.
we'll gently top it in the net. I mentioned double punching, this is how you do it, it's dead simple. One, two, hook in the slot, pull the discs out, roll them. A mouthful of natural goodness for Bream. There's another one. A lovely fish from a very underrated canal. Belting. Oh, well that feels a bit better. Decent brain. Take it easy. Oh yeah. Well, look at that. An old warrior. That's gotta be a couple of pound. Well that's the best fish of the day and I think we'll call it quits at that. Just pop it gently into the net. Let's have a look at what we've got then. Well look at that. I never expected to catch quite so many fish on such a blustery day. We've had the conditions all against us. There's got to be over £10 there. Really pleased with that. Just shows you the power of bread and how cheap it is and how good it is. And we'll just gently get these back and uh, let them go. Hopefully we can uh, catch them again another day. Right, so in summary, we've caught short at four and a half metres and I've fed two 50p sized bowls of very sloppy fine bread there to catch probably 40, 50, 60 roach, something in that order. Then seeing the skimmers and catching skimmers short and seeing one or two knocking about rolling across we've gone in and I've only fed two walnut sized bowls of coarse of liquidized bread and you've seen the result there's been probably 20 odd skimmers there well over 10 pounds I've spent less than a pound on bait all in including the liquidized bread and the hook bait so why not give bread a go this autumn it's a fantastic bait hope you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching <laughs>